I lead an organization, a nonprofit called Plywood People, and we have a mantra, we will be known by the problems we solve. And we get to work with all kinds of social entrepreneurs in the city. In the last two years, we've worked with like 70 different projects. And I get to uh, share about one project that we started today. When I was in college, I met a guy named James. James is a refugee from Sudan. And um, I remember going on a car ride with him and him telling me his story about running, literally fleeing from his country while bullets were really like gliding by his ears. That moment from Save It Private Ryan, when you heard the bullets going by, he experienced that, and he really introduced to me this reality of refugees in the world. A refugee is a person who's been forced to leave their country to escape war, persecution, or natural disaster. Twelve years ago, uh, the government chose Clarkston, Georgia, to be a place where they were going to bring refugees um, into, into the state. In the last two years, 12,000 refugees have been placed in that community. If you don't know where Clarkson is, if you just go east past Decatur, th past the farmer's market, over 285, you'll start seeing people from all over the world. The worst conflicts in the world have all gathered in one community. Time Magazine called it the most diverse square mile in the United States. When they get here, the number one job that people get is a job at the chicken factory. And most people have seen Food Inc., right? They talk about the chickens, but most people don't talk about the workers that have to deal with the chickens. Um, this is the job they get because they don't know English. My friend Kay had that job. She would get up at 4 a.m. and get in a truck and pay $10 to go all the way up to Gainesville, Georgia. And that's Kay. And she would come back, and she wanted to get a different life, so she, she would go to school, to ESL classes as soon as she was done. Kay is this, this beautiful person that is an example for that whole community. And that is why we made her the manager of our project. Um, we have a job training program in Clarkston. We employ seven women right now. The first thing that they do is they learn to sew. And then they go through all these other programs that we do. It's a one-year job training program. They learn basic skills like, you know, timing with work and how to deal with American cultural issues. They learn... Um, yeah, there's some of the things they do. They learn basic English. They, uh, they get ESL classes. We line them up with a mentor, they get cultural mentoring, um, they, uh, they learn how to do a budget, we open up a bank account, teach them about direct deposit for the first time, which is like unheard of, right? And we did their taxes with them for the first time, trying to explain why one person got $500 back and the other 700 is a little complicated. But the idea is that we create a situation for these refugees where they are living thriving lives here in America, where they can find joy, again, in their workplace and in their daily lives. And that's Veronica, one of the girls we get to work with consistently. The women that we hire are from Burma and from Iraq. And the one thing that we learned in the first year we did this, by having people from two different cultures, it changes the workplace. If they're all from one place, their common language would be from their country. But now the common language of the shop is English. So that was one of the first things that we've learned, and it's part of their development. So what do we sell? We sell bags made out of old billboards. So this is a project we just got done doing for MailChimp. That was literally a MailChimp billboard on the side of the road um, in, uh, in Atlanta. And we turned them into iPad sleeves, and we turned them into wallets. And we make bags and satchels for, um, you'll see some of the products here in a minute. We make yeah, satchels, iPad sleeves, laptop sleeves, messenger bags, billfolds, all these different products in partnership with some really large companies around, and it, and it feeds our whole program. We've made and sold 65,000 products in the last two and a half years, um, so it's, which is kind of, kind of cool. So um, yeah, we get all that stuff donated. Here's some of the new packaging we just got done doing for, um, for our billfolds. We try to have a little fun with it. The left one says on the top, change in your back pocket. And then on the right, um, says your pocket is about to get awesome. So we want to have fun with it. We want to encourage people and, and treat these women with the greatest dignity in what we do. The uh, latest project we've been doing, um, some coffee roasters have been giving us their bags, and we're upcycling those into um, these bags, which you could buy at Octane anytime. And then we also make uh, pillows out of that same material. And you've seen some of these products before, I'm sure. The idea of this, though, uh, and I will say this about the pillows, they're not really that nice to put your face on. <laughs> they're kind of more for show, and I mean, that's like a really, yeah, doctored up image. But 
But they look cool and they're kind of trendy right now, so you could buy it or whatever. Um, <laughs> but the bigger idea of what we're doing is that we've learned that out of our excess, we can address issues of need and suffering. And in this community of amazing people, um, that we've, we've created jobs out of what other people thought was trash. Those billboards were just going to a landfill and we've created jobs for people in that community. And so one of the challenges that we do for everyone we talk to is how do you look into your own life and find excess that exists in your home and in your life that you could somehow contribute to someone else's need. This is uh, the latest uh, line that we came out with this fall. It just came out on Wednesday. And uh, so yeah, you can buy it for all your friends for Christmas this year, right? Um, and so we have seven jobs, and that could be successful. But on Monday, we told our friends there that we were going to hire two more. Within 48 hours, we had 12 people at our front door looking for jobs. Not just like with a resume, but they were ready to work. And that community has hundreds and thousands of people that need better jobs than they currently have right now. And so we need creative people like you to join in with us. Last Christmas, all those ladies uh, put their money together and they bought me a tie. I don't, I've never worn a tie to work ever before. But they thought for some reason their boss needed this tie. And, um, but more than that, they were showing their generosity towards me. And I promise if you integrate your lives in that community, you will experience that same generosity that we have too. The last thing I want to share is you can come and be a part of us. You can volunteer in some way or buy a bag at Christmas or tonight if you want. But, um, in Burmese, they, uh, they have a little simple saying that says, ta-ta. So I want to say with all of you guys, ta-ta. Have a good night. Mm -hmm.